It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay. The board meeting of the Valley, the City of Salt Valley Fire and Rescue Board of Directors is called to order at 6 p.m. The uh, first item on the agenda is uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Julie, would you please call the roll? Director Scott? Yes, President. Director Carnahan? Present. Director Woodbury? Here. And Director Phillips and Director Gates are out. Absent. Okay. We all had a chance to read the minutes of the May 17th meeting. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Being none, the minutes are approved. Public comment. Uh, we have one signed up in public comment. Would you like to proceed, now? I will, thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jane Hudson, and I live in Mapleton on East Mapleton Road. On March 31st, an old structure across the driveway from me probably 90, maybe 100 feet away. I've been told last year that it was going to be burned. Other than that, I told the contractor, Gary Rose from Leisure Excavating, when he came the first time that I had asthma, if he was going to burn it, he would need to put me up somewhere. And I know he heard because right off he says, well, don't you have some place you can go? Well, anyway, about 5.30 one evening, I uh, get in the shower before 6 o'clock. I get out. I've got a splitting headache. I look out the window, and the fire department has shown up, Mapleton Fire Department, and set that whole structure on fire. So I don't even have time to get clothes. I don't have time to dry my hair or anything else. And what made it so bad was I had told somebody from the fire department that came up there. They drove up, parked in the street with a fire truck and walked up the hill. And I stopped them at the top and told them that if they could pass on burning this, please do, because I have asthma bad. So here it is on fire. Nobody said a word to me after it been two months at least since I talked to anyone about it. So I uh, got in my pickup and drove off. I went to Swiss home. 8.30, I came back by. The flames were still four feet high and there was no one around. I couldn't stay, so I drove off. I went to a friend's house and spent the night. The next morning, I came back at 8 o'clock. There were still flames two feet high and no one around. I couldn't stay, so I left until 5 o'clock that day. I came back, it's still smoldering, still has some flames, there's still no one around. So, the only reason I was able to stay that night is because I have allergies and I have asthma, so I have some machines in my house to clean the air. They're big enough to handle that. And so that's how I managed to stay there. No one showed up and looked at that. No one checked anything else about it. It sat there and smoldered for two more days until the rain put it out. So as far as I'm concerned, somebody tried to kill me. I'm not happy about it. I went to Mapleton to talk to them about it, and they said this was a joint venture. So I don't have any idea how all of this works, but I am dissatisfied with the way this went. So please look at your policies and procedures so that this doesn't happen to anyone else. Well, thank you for your comments, and we certainly appreciate your concern. It's unfortunate when this type of thing happens. Um, we as the board do not get directly involved in the operations of the thing. So what I would like to do is uh, have our chief, Jim Weinborder, who is in charge of that, and uh, discuss with you maybe a little further. No, I mean, we weren't privy to it, and you know we, we set policy and do that, but we're not involved in the day-to-day -day operations. So I'd appreciate it if you, if you would. Uh, 
but Jim, I'm happy to share, to share with you um, what, what I do know about that. Um, we received a letter from Carol Baxter, who I'm not sure if she's the president, but she's the representative that, that sends correspondence from the fire district with us. So we received that last week. Oh. And explaining the situation, I actually mentioned you um, by name. So um, with that, I advised our board the, the letter. It's actually in, in our board packet under correspondence. And I told them that we would begin investigating when we could. Uh, at this point, I've only had the opportunity to talk with one person who is our training officer. And so I can share with you what I know at this point. Um, what I know at this point is, is that uh, Leisure, and I think maybe even the property owner, don't hold me to that, had contacted us about this burn. Um, because this burn was not in our jurisdiction, we referred them to the Mapleton Fire District. And so they, from there, um, they went ahead and they made the plans and the arrangements. Now we were invited uh, to participate in the burn and we sent an engine company, and that's not uncommon in training burns where you will invite neighboring districts, hey, would you like to send an engine company and they can participate in, in the procedure. So that's exactly uh, what we did. Um, in, in speaking with Jeff, um, he, as far as he know, he did not have any contact with anybody in regards to uh, anyone coming up to him making a complaint, i.e. Uh, yourself. So I do not know who, who you interacted with on that. Um, typically, you know, we rely on the other district there. They supply the incident commander. They produce the burn plan, and um, we show up. And then, then we burn it. We're, we're sort of a resource for them, I guess, is the best way to put it. So I don't know. I can tell you that what we do as a fire district is we, uh, part of our planning process um, is to get permits. Uh, we go through a checklist. And one of the things on that checklist is to get in touch with surrounding neighbors ahead of time to notify them that at this date this time, you're going to have a burn. And then if there's an issue, then, then we're aware of it. And I can also tell you that um, personal experience <coughs> in my career, I've had three training burns that we've stopped because there were issues with either wind blowing it or a neighbor complaining or something like that. So I, I can't speak for um, Mapleton, um, but I can tell you that's, that's what I know at this point. We'll be following up with a few other people and then um, I'll share what I know at that time. And I'm happy to get you a copy of that. I'm if you'd like to leave your, your contact information. I did, it's on the uh, sign in sheet there. So I would appreciate it, thank you. You bet. And thanks to everyone for the concern you showed us the time. It's definitely appreciated. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the public hearing for the 2017-18 fiscal year budget. <clears throat> so we have a uh, open hearing. Is there anyone who wishes to make comments on the budget? None. No citizen, no one. Poor discussion. Well, the only thing I have is, in, in, I just want to explain. Last year, our, our adopted budget was uh, two million seven hundred fifty thousand uh, five hundred fifty-nine dollars. This year is three million six hundred twenty-eight thousand five hundred twenty-four dollars almost a million dollars difference, but most of that, and correct me if I'm wrong, are grants that, uh, one's a seismic grant for 700 and some odd thousand dollars. There's uh, another grant that we got for uh, through FEMA, safer through FEMA, and then part of that also is, is the uh, training officer's uh, budget, which is also a grant, is that not correct? In the IGA also be bringing in money so certainly yeah. the, those three combinations so that's where the, the difference is that it's pretty substantial you know to go up a million dollars in one year or almost a million dollars but it's really not uh, our main budget and our tax rate is going to be exactly the same good comment second 
Any further board discussion? Do we have a motion to adopt the um, budget for the coming year? Resolution number 2017 06. Second. A motion and a second. There will be no further discussion. The uh, resolution is adopted. Is there any old business? Okay, Chief, you want to start with your report? Sure. Um, we'll just start off with are there any questions on the information campaign in, in the Chief's report? Nope, then I'll just hit highlights. Okay. Um, the, the big thing that our IGA update is, as we discussed last month and directed, um, we've worked on getting that group of people together at the Administrative Advisory Committee to come up with a financial measurement. Um, at this time, I have um, uh, Chris Mark, our auditor, Larry Farnsworth, who is, will be um, at that, well, I don't know technically if he'll be a board member because he's not sworn in yet or not, but it's it, close enough. Uh, board member of the Ambulance District, uh, Director Woodbury has agreed to help out uh, Terry Knight from Lane Fire Authority, who, um, by the way, has a lot of experience, recent experience with IGAs. They've recently just formed a fire authority, but that started through administrative IGA. So I thought he would have some interesting input or guidance for us from a fire district perspective. Andy Parks, the um, interim CFO for the city of Florence, D. Osborne uh, from Banner Bank, and I was also fortunate enough to get someone from the OFGA. Oregon Finance uh, Government Association Officer, and his, his name is Ron, I believe it's Ron Harkin. He is the CFO from the city of Roseburg, and um, explained to them what we're trying to do, and he's actually, he's kind of excited to do it. Uh, any questions on that? So, and uh, Director Carnahan, I'm sure you saw in your email, I sent you a thing that proposed, I don't really have any other budget items at that time, or, or not budget items, but agenda items, so. Just making sure you're aware of that. Strategic plan update really um, just continue to chip away. The big thing is, is that uh, we're working on when the new board members come on board to um, conduct that, that work session uh, where we can update and uh, move forward. So we're anticipating it's probably going to happen in the August time period. Uh, we log exercise uh, June 8th. We had a we log exercise that involved us, the United States Coast Guard, the port. The hospital, the ambulance district, um, and I think uh, Lane County Emergency Management and their, their search and rescue folks. And it was centered on a hazardous material slash meth lab explosion. And um, it, it went on for a few hours. It was a, it was a good drill. I um, appreciate the coverage by the newspaper. And uh, most importantly, what it allowed us to do was exercise our emergency plans um, throughout an event. So all the way from the first company that arrived to the time that the hospital or the patients are receiving treatment the hospitals and making sure that they mesh together and going through their decontamination uh, procedures. So not everything was done perfectly, as you imagine, but that's the point of uh, these drills so that we make sure that we learn what we need to learn before the actual situation happens. Uh, Part-time uh, administrative assistant, Julie, will be uh, addressing this as well, but we have brought her on. Her name is Holly McGuffey. She's also a volunteer with our organization, and she's uh, every uh, report I've got so far, she's doing a great job. Seismic grant, I met with um, the engineering firm, HGE, that uh, got the grants with us on uh, last week, last Friday, to begin the preliminary planning process of this. Um, so at this point, um, in the contract that we signed with them, basically what that said at the time is that if we were awarded the grant, then they would take it from there and that they would um, be in charge of getting the contractor and doing a lot of that work so that we do not have to do that, go through the, the bidding process that normally the government agency would have to do it would be under, under their, though they will follow all required laws and everything that they get to take care of instead of us, which is very nice. Um, the, the big thing that I, I wanted to throw out to you was that I gave you some misinformation. Um, I thought that it was actually, it would be five years to completion, but it's actually September 30, 2018. And so when I read through the grant information, I was like, wow, that's going to be pretty tight. So that was 
certainly one of the things that I discussed with him and said, hey, you know, it looks like this could be kind of a challenge, so let's make sure that we get all these done. He does not seem to think that's a problem, but I think that also worked very well for us um, working that agreement with him to, to manage a number of these things. The other thing I want to pass along and that um, I wanted to make sure that he was aware of this is that as they choose a contractor and as they choose subcontractors, we feel that it's very important as a fire district that if we can keep some of this work locally, that we do that. And one of his recommendations is that we, um, that we host, I can't remember exactly what he called it, but like an announcement of the work, we'll, we'll host it here at the fire station and the contractor and himself will be able to be there to make sure that local um, tradesmen are aware of this so that they can bid for the jobs and, and hopefully get the work. Uh, any questions on that? And, and we'll do everything we can to make sure that we're getting that information out on our social media as well as in the newspaper. So we, we do think that that's important. Um, Safer Grant, uh, the, the biggest update right now is this Saturday that we'll be finishing the Upriver Academy. They have uh, 15 people from Swiss Home Deadwood that includes the Upper Deadwood Creek people and they've, they've really enjoyed it. We've got nothing but positive feedback and our folks have really done a good job on that so we're very proud of that. Um, Jim, is that going to be just kind of an ongoing thing that they'll just have uh, access to a lot of our training? Yeah, well we, in the future? we make everything available to them anyways. Now within our goals, uh, we, we identified that we, I believe we would certify, um, or, or not certify, get people trained to the firefighter one level. Okay, so not certificate, but trained to that level. And we, we said that on purpose because we didn't know if the department would be set up or want to do that because some departments choose not to go through DPSS T certification, but the law requires training to this level. Um, and uh, I believe it's 10 a year. So we're easily going to meet that, but those goals were also based on getting a number of Mapleton folks and a uh, number of Swiss Home Deadwood folks. So certainly we're going to meet that goal with them as we, we go through. Okay. And then also uh, on that same evening, we had um, uh, our, our operations chief and Alan Curtis go to the Mapleton Fire Station and they got thank you for the for that's all the information I have. Do you have any uh, any other questions? No. Uh, is the operations chief tonight? I, I think he's in San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last week he was in Kogiak or something. Yeah. So he's, and uh, what, what Director Scott's referring to is he's um, do, fulfilling his two week commitment. Um, reserve commitment to the United States Coast Guard. And what he's actually doing is he is out going to different air stations and instructing them in firefighting techniques. And so that's why he's going to these different locations. Well, we have his written report. So I guess, uh, anybody have any questions about any of this that the chief can answer? No, I just uh, want to make a comment. There were 41 calls in May and 22 of them medical exists. That just, that's some information. That's not uncommon. Um, okay. Prevention Division. Sean? Hello. I made it time. Made it. We got the report in front of you. Some of the big things is uh, <clears throat> we met with the city and developer for a subdivision up on Jake Man Hill extending that subdivision out, working on access for that. Um, worked on a filming for a countywide program for kids at school, fire prevention, fire busters, what it's called, and the rest of it's just normal work. Uh, we've got 10 new fire hydrants that are in service. I haven't flow tested them yet, but with the new project on uh, Rody and on 8th Street there, two hydrants right there, we have two new hydrants in the system and a 16 inch water line, so that's gonna be really nice. Um, we completed a, well it was this month, but we completed a company inspector training program, 18 people, 18 firefighters passed that class and will be certified. And the safety meeting is attached. I don't have a copy of it. Is there any questions? Are they going to make him put in a, a Jake man put in a second egress? Because there's only really one way out of that. Yeah, and if he 
The code says if you sprinkle all the homes, you don't have to have a second one. So anything new will have to be sprinkled if it's approved. Yeah, it's pretty steep if we had a lot of fire going on that. We have a lot of people trapped up there. Mm -hmm. Just in my opinion. Oh yeah. Yeah, the new part of the Orange Road would be a yeah. lot less steep. And, yeah. They're all kind of on the top of the hill too, so it would be pretty right up the sides. Yeah, it would, you know, be like Oakland. She started, I think about three weeks ago. She's doing a fantastic job. The whole admin team, as a matter of fact, is stepping up and um, doing a great job. I just, I just can't say enough good things about all of them, Mary and Karen and Holly. So that's awesome. And I'd like to apologize. We haven't had any policies for your review for the past couple of months, as you've noticed. But you should see that come back within a couple months. We'll start providing that for you again and get that process moving. And in reviewing the financials when I was going through and preparing our financial statement for this month, I noticed, man, the IGA administrative income is down at 37%. That's not right. We should be up at almost 100. So in going through it with Karen, I discovered that her, um, through the crash, the memorized transaction had disappeared. And so we've caught it get it resolved so our year end will show where it's supposed to be for 100%. You'll see that for the June financial statement. Do you guys have any other questions from my report? Okay. Thank you. We were to ratify the bills for the past month, amount of 125,371.93 and transfers to the money market. Second to approve the payment of the bills and transfers. All those in favor signify by saying no. Aye. Aye. A small group tonight. <laughs> okay. Uh, new business. The proposed uh, chaplain program coordinator job description. So, as we talked about during the, the budgetary process and, uh, earlier. Uh, we've uh, it, the, now that the budget has been approved, we have four thousand dollars funded on the fire district side, and four thousand dollars should be funded uh, tomorrow night when that budget is approved to fund ten hours a week of a part-time um, chaplain coordinator position. Uh, basically, again, uh, what that job's responsibility is going to be is to make sure that we're getting training to our folks, um, that we're interacting with other community organizations, and darn it, I, I was going to bring it up, I was actually going to show you an example of some of the project work that we want this person to complete, and uh, modeled off of the program in Washington County, Oregon, where they put together this resource book that they leave uh, with family members or with people after they have interaction. And that would be an example of some of the stuff that we want to do. It talks about it has resources for them, brief resources, other other things that can be applicable in those situations. Um, and, and, and again, as we mentioned um, earlier in, in the budget committee, is that we, you know we'll see how this goes in a year. Um, the, the project work that we want to complete may be completed within that year and may be done, and uh, it's no longer needed. Where we might find out that this is a really advantageous thing. So um, as I'm approaching this, I'm, I'm definitely looking at this from a one-year perspective with reevaluation, and the person that's inter interested in that position is, is aware of that as well. So any questions on that? Well, it, and basically what we're asking you to do is to approve the job description um, for that position. Sorry. I'd like to table this until well, there's only three of us here. I mean, is one one month going to hurt? No. I'd like to take one, and then we'll have a discussion on the issue. Uh, I just think creating the job at this point, I'd like some more input. Yeah, it does. And the money's there. It's in the budget, so uh, that's not a big issue at this point. Does anyone have a problem with table in tomorrow's week? Until next month? No. I sure do. Yeah, yeah, I would like to have myself. No, not only two. Wait a second. Okay, 
Uh, second, I, we've got another item here that is, uh, kind of came up and it's, uh, we just neglected to put it on, and that is the renewal of the, uh, I guess, Jim's participation, the Chief's participation with the IGA, and we have to have an agreement that we approve having him serve as the director of the IGA, I guess it's a, it's an annual thing. We have to approve it on an annual basis. So, so the background on this is that uh, currently the, the IGA, the uh, West Carolina Ambulance District, technically consists of two separate IGAs, one for uh, Julie's work and one for my work. And the, the discussion at the time is we'll just get it going this way and then next year we'll address it and put it into a single document which we were doing. One of the things that we did not realize um, was that there is a difference in the two documents and the difference is, is that in the one that pertains to Julie it's this automatic renewal and it's addressed on an annual basis but the, the one that addresses the, the chief director position requires a, a signature to be carried forward. Um, so, with that being said, uh, one of the things that we did is I went ahead and just reviewed this contract to make sure that my memory served me correctly. Within that, and I was going to provide you with the correct information, which is, is that within that contract it says that there's a 90 day time period between the contract ending, which will be June 30th, and uh, from that date backwards that either organization needs to bring forward that they're not planning to renew. So with that in mind, um, I, I am not aware of that unless you're aware of that and I've spoken with the um, Ambulance District Board President where he has not received any information as far as I know hasn't been discussed any board meetings. That being said, um, going under the pretense that um, we're planning on moving forward with this and just to make sure that we're staying within the confines of this contract technically requires a signature to move on into the next year. Now, um, we're still working with legal counsel to combine the two, but we don't see that final combination done until uh, about a month or two from now. So in order to carry this forward and get us into that next month when we can bring you a single document that's more applicable to what we're doing, we're, we're bringing last year's um, to you with updated dates on there the, the 17, 18 dates on there as opposed to the same document you signed last year just with uh, new dates for a new year. So are both these covered really under uh, resolution 2017-07 or do they take separate? Uh... It, Julie's doesn't require the signature. It's an automatic renewal. Ours requires no, I mean, no, I'm asking about is the uh, resolution Second? No, second. It's for one year. 
Okay. Motion <clears throat> carried. Your resolution is approved. John, excuse me. Um, I think we should do a roll call on that. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Director Carnan? Yes. Director Scott? Yes. Director Woodbury? Yes. Thank you. It'd be nice if the rest were here as well. But Okay. Next item is a special presentation. Yes. Um, we're hoping that uh, Director Gates would be here, but as we know, she's. I think she has some surgery. Excuse. Double B job. We we have two outgoing board members, and um, on, on behalf of the board, the fire district, the firefighters, and uh, the administrative staff, we wanted to present. Uh, Director Scott Johns with this memento of our appreciation and, and basically <laughs> yeah, no, well, you know, you know, that. what it says on there is it says that on, on behalf of the fire district we want to thank you um, not only for the hard work and the dedication you've um, given to the fire district but you've also um, given to the community. <laughs> can, we try, can we do a quick handshake? And Get the, the, the other directors in there too. Yeah, everybody's no, going. Come on, no, he's, he's, he's the one. It's his. It's his uh, let's get into the show. So we want to get in here. It's right in the microphone. Oh, no worries. We got a description. Let's make it safe. Okay. Get in here. That's perfect. You don't have that white bank on this. No, it's no problem. <laughs> We're well equipped. <laughs> Stretch my iPhone. <laughs> John, thank you, and the job well done. Thank you. It's been fun. Had a great experience. Enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, Gloria was here. She had more time than I did.